You know why people hate D.C.? It's the land of make-believe, I'm telling you. This is the place that called Trump racist for trying to build a wall to protect our southern border. Meanwhile, did you know the Biden administration right now, right now is in talks with the government of Tajikistan to help them build a wall in Afghanistan? <laughs> it's almost like, my God, there's, there's a refugee crisis unfolding in Afghanistan. Let's build a wall to keep them out of our neighboring country. I guess walls work there. Can't do that here in America, though. But we can help another nation do it on the other side of the planet. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is the resolve of the brainchild we call D.C. I spent a year in this cesspool. Everyone walks around with a self-important attitude, but nothing actually gets done. It's, it's amazing. Now, in D.C., knowing people is the name of the game. Name dropping makes you cool. That's the measure of success. Who can you call that'll do you a favor? Every night's an event or a party or a get-together, but it's never about just having a good time. It's always about a network of who can get what from who. Not like you and I. Hey, Bob, you want to come over for a barbecue? Sure. Yeah, cool. All right, and then we hang out and we have a beer. We don't ask each other for anything. But not in D.C. It's always an angle to get something from someone. How can they leverage your connections to elevate themselves? The longer you're there, the more people you owe. Just like Joe Biden his half-century stint in Congress, but we'll get there in a minute. When I was in the Trump administration, all the people that worked for me were always running around talking about how much they were doing, but they didn't actually seem like they ever had any measurable delivery on all their frantic assertions. I, and I learned this really quickly in D.C. Action constitutes achievement in their eyes, not actual achievement, just like Con John Kirby said recently. We continue to make progress every day in getting uh, Americans as well as uh, SIV uh, applicants and vulnerable Afghans out. I, I think the president has been very clear that uh, what our expectations are uh, once this retrograde is complete with respect to the safety and security uh, of American citizens. I mean, I think we've been very clear about that. We're going to continue to pursue uh, a, a variety of means to help those Americans who want to get out after we are gone. We're working on it, we're trying, we're doing this. Check out these shiny numbers. Doesn't matter, bro. The, the deliverable is every American out. Stop giving us statistics on planes. Is the ball in the end zone or isn't it? They don't see it like that in D.C. Very few people actually really honestly do any work there. One, I mean, there is quite frankly no need to, do a, 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 you know, a, to show any measurable of deliverable because the federal bureaucracy is not a meritocracy. If you've survived there for more than 90 seconds, you know this. In fact, this is the crazy thing. Trying to make changes, for better or for worse, is actually a detriment to your career. So people just go along to get along, to protect their job. Trump is really actually the first dude who ever came in there with his game face on. He was like, I'm here to get stuff done. He was the first guy that really applied free market principles to the government. I mean, at, at least in a long time. And it worked. Look, the Beltway hated him for this because it made people do their job. But the economy boomed, not because of anything he did for the economy, but by doing things that kept the government out of the way of the economy. I mean, it's shocking. I mean, it shouldn't be, but it is. You see, the government doesn't create anything. Everything they create must be confiscated from you and I via taxes and regulation. And to, I mean, to be fair, there's one slight exception to this. The Department of Interior does lease out land for various reasons that garner some income. But the administration, th this administration particularly, has royally screwed that up. They, it, again, they are technically leasing taxpayer-owned public lands to private companies that actually generate products. So they're still technically taking it away from the economy, but whatevs. But given all that, this is probably why the government's recent jobs report was so off. I mean, we were talking, this is biblically off. The economy added only 23,000 jobs last month. Or, sorry, 235,000 jobs last month. But you notice how Republicans always say the economy added versus people like Joe Biden who always say, we created or I created. We created in the first 100 days 1,300,000 new jobs. 1,300,000 jobs in 100 days. That's more Jew new jobs in the first 100 days of any president in history. This morning, we've learned that our economy created 900,000 jobs in March. It means the first two months of our administration has seen more new jobs created than the first two months in any administration in history. 
I, these people just don't get it. I mean, there's a huge distinction here. And it, it all shows their lack of understanding of how the economy actually works. And that distinction is why this number was way off their projections of 720,000. There's a couple factors here. Now, first, from the New York Post, the U.S. added just 200, uh, 235,000 jobs last month, falling way short of expectations amid of fresh concerns over the pace of the labor market recovery due to surging COVID-19 cases driven by the Delta variant, the Fed said Friday. No. Wrong. This is not why people aren't going back to work. People aren't going back to work because they're still receiving extra unemployment benefits. It turns out, weird, I know, that if you pay people not to work, they don't work. Crazy. The entry-level jobs that nearly every business is trying to hire for right now actually pays around the same as those unemployment benefits are paying right now. So why would you work when you can stay home and make the same amount of money? I mean, the people running our country are imbeciles, I swear. Second... When you shut down the economy for almost two years, which we did, a lot of the jobs that were you know, above the entry-level pay raises vanished. And they're not, they're not coming back until these idiot governors stop putting crazy restrictions on how many people you can have in your establishment, this max masking thing, even this vaccine mandates like we have in, in the cesspool of New York City. Third, the rising cost of goods stops growth. Let me say that again. The rising, stop, the rising cost of goods stops growth, even more so when you have people in charge like the Democrats that have been saying for the last decade they want the rich to start paying, their, paying more in taxes or paying their fair share or whatever they say. They stop, these rich people, they stop investing in the economy until they know how their investments will be taxed. Be, that's why they're rich, because they're, they're smart about how they spend their money. This causes the economy to contract. You and I know this. But for some reason, the people in D.C. with all the experience, they can't figure this out. I don't know why. Trump was the first guy who really put this into perspe in perspective for us. This type of disconnected policy, just it goes far beyond the economy, too. I, I know we keep bringing this up, but let's look at Afghanistan, because I'm not going to let this story go. I don't think there was a single person on the ground, and I mean fight in the fight that dealt with the war on the day-to-day -day basis, that didn't say leaving the way we would would completely implode. OK, but the same overloads or overlords that you and I you know, are just ridiculed by that I told you about, they disagreed. And here we are. The blood of those patriots is on their hands because they didn't listen. This, just like the economy, illustrates the growing divide between those who enforce foreign policy and those who dream it up in some beltway poker bar. Now, you see, if there is no deliverable metric, case in point, Who's been fired over the Afghanistan disaster? No one. Who's been fired for wrongly predicting the jobs numbers by over 200%? No one. If you and I did that in a private sector, gone. That's our government. And that's why people like you and I hate it so much. Because the thing that makes me so angry is that they think we're stupid. And they just lie to us and expect us to believe them. And when we challenge them, they double down. They call us tinfoil hat-wearing people or, or deplorables. But Biden is known for basically just lying to us. Watch. And anyway, and if we I don't do drive an 18-wheeler, man. Yeah. Oh, I wish oh, yeah. I could. <laughs> That's I awesome. got to. <laughs> uh, how about this oldie but a goodie right here? What law school did you attend, and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, yes. could you quickly... I, I think, we I, I, think I probably right. have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. <laughs> I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Well, I've always learned that people who are smarter than people don't talk about their education and how much smarter they are than people. They just go out and be smarter. I mean, and 50% of that was proven false. This is not stuff that you just can't easily Google. I mean, but by far the most shocking of all is when Joe Biden spoke to the president of Afghanistan and asked him to lie on the world stage to progress a potentially, you know, a, 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 I guess progress a narrative that was patently false. 
Now, asking President Ghani to tell the world that the reality of the Taliban takeover was not real should be a fireable offense, right? If Joe Biden worked for the private sector and he was found to have asked the CEO of another company to lie about, I don't know, financial records, he'd go to prison. They impeached Trump for far less. We only somewhat know what Biden said. I, I need not tell you the perception that things aren't going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. There's a need, whether it's true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. And this is Ghani's response. Mr. President, we are facing a full-scale invasion composed of Taliban, full Pakistani planning and logistical support, and at least 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, predominantly Pakistanis, thrown into this. Uh, the president of Afghanistan told the president of the United States straight up, we're dying here and Pakistan's working against us. Joe Biden didn't say, you've got to be kidding me, man, or come on, man. He should have said, I'm calling the prime minister of Pakistan right now. We're doubling down on our air support to the Afghan army. Nope. What did the leader of the free world do? He told the Afghan president to lie to the world. Trump was impeached for asking a foreign government to investigate a corruption problem in their own ranks. We need the full transcript of Joe Biden's call to the Afghan president. We also need to hear the audio of this call. Did Biden offer anything to the Afghan president in return for lying to the world? What else was said on this call? Just a few weeks, I mean, this happened just a few weeks before the Taliban took over the entire country in, in a matter of hours. 13 U.S. soldiers died as a result of Joe Biden supposedly not knowing the Taliban would take over so quickly. The American people have a right to know if the president of the United States lied to them. If they lied to the families of those soldiers, they have a right to know if the president of the United States was lying to all of us. Release the full transcript now, Lion Joe. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.